So with that, uh, let me just open it and just to do the multiple choice. I'll, I'll do it a couple times. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. So uh, I'll just do the first time. Um, yeah, let me just to get some Zoom writing stuff in case I need to write anything. Um, the usual standard disclaimer applies. I uh, the uh, ten minutes of time is super short amount of time even for me. So even I won't necessarily be uh, spending a lot of time, um, a, a lot of time uh, uh, explaining my answers, because that's where I can get into trouble running out of time. Uh, let me open up my calculator before I do. Uh, I start the uh, clock. I guess I'll just name this a sandbox. Uh, that's all I will need. Ah, we're on title, so that's fine. Um, okay, I think I'm all set. Um, yeah, so I'll start. We're starting at 11.08, so I know what clock to watch out for. And we'll just do this once, and I'll, I'll do it a second time before moving on to freeform. Or move on to freeform and then do it a second time. Let me do it that way. Uh, so... It says, um, choose the correct statement below regarding amplitude, frequency, and period of simple harmonic oscillator motion. Okay. So, larger amplitude oscillator. That's the almost the exact opposite of the <laughs> defining feature of a simple harmonic oscillator. Uh, the period of uh, is it's inversely proportional, not proportional. The given. Uh, right. This is the, really the distinctive feature of simple harmonic oscillator. That's so important. By the way, uh, these questions might be dynamically generated, so just watch out for that. <laughs> just because the question prompt is the same doesn't mean the choices are the same. Uh, uh, which of the following does not describe a system that can undergo simple harmonic oscillator motion? Um, okay, mass on a pendulum. That's probably fine. Marble in a ball. Depending on shape of a ball, it might actually undergo something like a simple harmonic oscillator. Ah, yeah. Cartoon on inclined ramp. So it, uh, it doesn't have a restoring force. The force goes only in one direction down the ramp and doesn't come back. So can't do it. Uh, uh, yeah. The point of the question is almost anything can undergo simple harmonic oscillator motion if there's some kind of a stable equilibrium. So it's the choice below which most correlates units as a unit of period or of a frequency. Okay. <laughs> also, this might be dynamically generated. Seconds and bits per minute are units of period. No. One is this is a frequency. So no. Bits per minute and minute are no. The first one is the second one is unit of period. <laughs> minutes and seconds are unit of period. Okay. Good. Revolutions per minute and hertz are, yeah, they are both a unit of frequency, some kind of frequency. And just double checking the last one, yeah, this one is wrong, because both are um, units of period. I'm pretty sure that's dynamically generated. Um, distinguish between constructive interference and destructive interference. Um, it's about whether the, when you to superposition whether the directions of displacement cancel out or they add together. They kind of add in the same direction. So let's read it through the choices. Um, then the crest set to, that's a, yeah, constructive, destructive when a crest is reduced by, that sounds right. Let me check it and just double check the remainder of the choices to be sure. Uh, yeah, they don't multiply. That's not how superposition works. Yeah. Not, like both of these <laughs> are wrong mathematically. Um, crest of a, that's the destructive interference, not constructive. And, and these two describe, I mean, this, sorry, this is what I like to call word salad. They make a grammatical sense, but they don't make any meaningful sense. Um, constructive interference occurs when the crests of two waves add together destructive interference. The, 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 yeah, crescent troughs, they are not distinguished in this sense. Okay, uh, choose the statement below which correctly discusses 
Wave speed, wave frequency, and wavelength. Um, there's that one equation that relates that. Um, you are supposed to. So I highly recommend that you have this memorized. Or uh, if you don't want to have it memorized, uh, know how to derive it from their unit relationships through, through dimensional analysis, as I do it in lecture. Um, wave frequency is not given by those. <laughs> wavelength is wave velocity divided by frequency. Oh, yeah, that's right. I can do algebra on it to get that. Um, wave frequency, yeah, they are inversely proportional. Um, wavelength, yeah, that doesn't sound right. Okay. So, um, uh, expression which, oh, yeah, I, I think these two are basically the same questions. <laughs> All right. Um, I wish I hadn't erased it, but just remembering what I had just erased, I think it's this one. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, Mach 1 is equal to the speed of sound in air. Uh, oh, this is a number sense question. I think you are supposed to remember that the speed of sound is roughly uh, 300 meters per second. Uh, it, exact value depends on pressure, temperature. Uh, maybe not pressure, definitely depends on temperature. I don't think it actually depends on pressure. It's one of the surprising things. Depends on temperature. And so Mach 9, 9 times 3, 2700 is what I'm looking for. And oh wow, uh, um, these two are a little too close to each other. I think if I had to guess, I would go with this because uh, the, uh, the speed of uh, sound at sea level temperature, room temperature, is something like 340 meters per second. So times 9, so that would be. Yeah, closer to that than that. So, yeah, uh, I might actually be using like temperature of zero degrees C because up in the air it's colder. Um, below is a picture of a guitar, bumps, right? those are the frets, they're function, right? Standing waves, that's what it's getting at. <laughs> and um, so the thing to understand as you are reading this description is that it's a standing wave of nodes at the end. So, with that in mind, um, so most correct, what happens if a string is pressed just behind the 12th fret? Okay, so this is the whole length of the string. This kind of looks like halfway in between. Okay, so the guitar uh, a string fundamental produces 110 hertz. So if you make the wavelength to be half, the frequency should be double to 20 hertz. Okay, uh, not the same frequency, no. Uh, higher frequency of this, right? Half the wavelength, double the frequency. Uh, for from one of the relationships up there, uh, yeah. Okay, choose the correct formula for the. Uh, yeah, this is something you just have to have uh, memorized or know where to look it up in the textbook quickly. <laughs> it's one of those things that uh, either you have it memorized or know where to look it up quickly. In the lecture, we do go through derivation, but I'm not expecting you to do that in one minute. Uh, choose the physical principle, which is most closer. Uh, it would be conservation of the energy. Oh, and in the yes, last week's virtual class session, we went over the textbook section that goes through that derivation uh, a lot better than what I have done in my other attempts. Uh, in future semesters, I'll probably replace that video with the textbook version. Because I, I think uh, in thinking through it more, I, I do like the textbooks approach better because um, the approach I've taken is uh, trying to imagine the, the fluid element from the beginning to the end point. And I think that's a necessarily complicated um, way to analyze it. It's uh, better to do it the way the textbook does it, which is it's a thinking of some um, finite portion of fluid element. And they are thinking of an infinitesimal displacement, thinking of this infinitesimal element coming in and infinitesimal element going out. I think that's a lot cleaner. So that's what I will replace future. All right, I wasted no time. Let me submit it and I should have gotten 10 out of 10. <laughs> Hope the embarrassing thing doesn't happen. I mean, I joke uh, that it'll be embarrassing if I don't get 100%, but it's happened before. Uh, either. There were mistakes in the questions coded that I fixed, 
or there were some questions that were just uh, too ambiguously worded, even for me, or I just made a mistake and read it wrong. I was falling asleep. And that happens. So, so let me do multiple choice question at least one more time. And since I'm not doing this under the gun, under a serious uh, limitation of time limit, I'll just uh, take the proper amount of time um, to the usual amount of talking and not try to speed run. Oh, or second time, you know, let me do it the normal way. And then the third time, because I have three attempts, I will just do the speed run. Uh, I think that uh, that way, yeah, I'll, I'll feel better about ending things early. Uh, if I end up ending things early after doing the speed run. So okay, we are retaking. Okay, so um, first question, okay. Uh, health the prediction or can count the number of heart felt on the fixed amount of time health measures. Okay, so here uh, mental math uh, is useful. Uh, if you somehow know that 15 seconds is a quarter, a fourth of a 60 seconds or a minute, then the quick mental math you can do is 30 bits times 4, 120. Um, <laughs> that would be one of the ways uh, someone can do this in their head. Uh, you just pick an amount of seconds that's e where it's easy to do mental health math. If you did like 20 seconds, then you multiply by 3 and so on. Um, so, okay, choose the method, which may not be used to measure the period of a simple harmonic oscillator consisting of a mass hanging from a spring. Okay, mass on a spring, that's good. Uh, let me read it through. I count the number of oscillations of the mass in one minute and calculate. Oh, I see, I see. So I guess uh, um, what you have to remember is this relationship or definition of period. Um, um, I think the way I, in the experimental setting, the normal, usual way I would calculate period is I would count. Uh, so it's the amount of time per cycle. So I would measure time, delta t, and then divide it by number of cycles. If I somehow measure it for more than one cycle, that should give me period. So I count the number of cycles and calculate one minute. Okay, one minute is the time I used. So, okay, that looks fine. I, this would be good. Count the number of oscillations of the mass in one minute. Okay, this sounds like a frequency. The reciprocal of period. Let me check the other two. Starting with the mass is the lowest point of motion. <coughs> Measure the <coughs> time it takes for the mass to return to its own. Yeah, that's uh, this is what we call trough to trough method. So, yeah, sounds good. Highest the point. Yeah, this would be peak to peak. So okay, the one that's uh, wrong is this one. It would be fine for measuring frequency. If you are somehow expressing frequency not in hertz, but some weird unit based on minutes. <laughs> um, I don't even know if there's a name for that. Um, number of cycles per minute instead of second. Uh, RPM maybe uh, in the engine setting. Anyway, suppose the crankshaft of a <laughs> RPM, <laughs> 3000 RPM, what is the frequency of the rotation in SI units? Uh, let me skip that for now. We'll come back at the end when we know we have more time. Choose the expression which correctly relates different quantities in, right? I think I got this question. Wait, not this. Uh, so it is dynamically generated, so, so don't automatically go for that. Uh, this is actually correct one. Period being one over frequency, um, this is equivalent to wavelength times of uh, frequency. Don't, uh, don't do it without thinking, answer without thinking, just like I just almost did. Uh, just a statement below which correctly defines or describes wavelength. Um, okay, um, it's not related to amplitude. Length or, this sounds ambiguous. I'm gonna keep reading to see if there's something else. So, yeah, smallest portion of the wave that repeats. That's the important part. Uh, once you see the repeating pattern, then that gives you what the wavelength should be. And a lot of the ideal ways that we talk about, they are their spatial extent is infinite. It's the moment you try to localize them, you have to actually do certain things. <laughs> that's, uh, uh, that's non ideal. Yeah. So the statement below compares the wavelength to another wave also looks characteristic. Choose the most appropriate comparison below. Wavelength. Um, frequency, 
not really. Amplitude, nothing like it. Energy, not really. Uh, it's, you know, I guess one way to think about it is, uh, well, I don't know. I guess in case of analogy, they don't necessarily have to be tied together, although in this case, they usually are. So wavelength is like a period. In the sense, the wavelength is the smallest uh, spatial portion of the wave that um, that will that repeat. Period is the smallest duration of time over which an oscillator repeats what it was doing before. So uh, I think that's uh, really the way to get it. Okay, five minutes. I think I have to go a little bit faster. Human hearing is sensitive to, oh, yeah, this is just number memorizing exercise. Um, now, the, uh, any real person's hearing will, um, oh, wow, well, this is a little bit too close. Um, so a, a very old person might not be able to hear above 10 kilohertz. I think I can still hear like up to 13, 14 kilohertz. Um, this is like the kind of the outer limit of what the youngest the person can hear and what might what oldest the person might hear. At some point below certain frequency it's a uh, infrasonic sound and it's like if you are working at a construction site that can be an issue <laughs> to be aware of. <laughs> it's not waste time. Um stormy night, flash, seven seconds later. Oh so um seeing the lightning flash you approximate it as being immediate. Like travel so fast that we can say it instantaneously became visible to you. So it took sound seven seconds to get to you. And it's uh, nice if you have this number memorized. Speed of sound is about 340 meters per second. So multiply that by number of seconds to get this. So 2.4 kilometers away. That should be about the distance that the sound had to travel to come to you in seven seconds. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's number of calculating questions. I have one remaining at the top there, but I'll get to it in a bit. This is in which incorrectly describes the difference between liquids and gases. Um, in, oh, yeah, liquids are, that's about right, so that's correct. Adam bound each other. That is also correct. Gas is mostly free. Uh, oh, yeah, that is incorrect. Liquids and gas are both fluid because they both flow. Liquid, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's correct. That's more of a chemistry description, but fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fine. It's not wrong. Oh. Just the formula. Oh, we got this question before. That was the answer. Um, this is the type of question that can be dynamically generated. So all right. I got three minutes. So I think I have definitely enough time to do this question. So, uh, so it's a unit conversion question. Um, that's why I didn't just... Uh, answer it right away. Um, so you have 3000 RPM, you should know what it's talking about, revolutions per minute. And um, and when you are dealing with oscillations, it's good to have a good grasp of, um, uh, of uh, what do we call it, uh, uh, quasi units like a revolution, radians, cycles. These things are not real units, but it's important to distinguish them. Some of these are like each other, like revolution cycles, they are interchangeable. Radian is not. So with that in mind, when we have a hertz, I could write it one over second. I can also say, oh, that's a revolutions per second. With that in mind, I can leave these revolutions alone. I don't have to do a thing to it. What I need to do is convert minutes to seconds. So I need to be multiplying by this number of one uh, that has a minute on top, and it somehow magically turns into seconds. So I'm trying to think of quantities that's equal to each other. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. So this is a ratio of one, and not changing the number. So when I say this is equal to something, oh, so I take this divide by 60. I think with all the the uh, mental math is relatively easy. The 60 times 50 is 3,000, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so, so that's it. Let me just uh, save it and make sure I answered, oh, yeah, it says 10 out of 10, so I think I answered everything. So yeah, that's all the questions. And then I guess I hope you noticed that the number of questions are kind of few and far between. Uh, that's because of the 
nature of this section that we are covering, which is that a lot of the coverage of what's important is the conceptual understanding. There are mathematical details, but the kind of the things I would uh, um, want you to kind of express your understanding of, it'll be in the free form portion, not in the uh, multiple choice portion. Right, I'm just going to submit it. Out. Okay, good. All right, so let me do this. I'm going to try to speed run the, my third and last attempt. And let me see how quickly I can get through it without making a mistake. We'll just see. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm not saying anything because that will slow me down. Mental math is quicker than calculator. at this. Okay. So, we go to F times lambda, lambda is equal to V over F. 348 divided by 20,000 is that, so like two centimeters. And we clean that. So, okay, so two centimeters to two centimeters. There's a story behind this, which I tell in the lecture. Okay. Uh, two point something minutes. Okay, three minutes. Let's see if I missed anything. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Um, I think, uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, to those of you joining to the end of this, uh, uh, staying to this end of this uh, virtual class session. Um, 